Please do the pledge. Join me in saying the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Virginia, would you lead us in the prayer? Since our last resident council meeting, Father, three of our community members have gone to their eternal home. We thank you for their days among us, and we pray for peace and comfort for the families of Patrick Hennepin, Bill Selvig, and Ann McCown. Now today, we especially pray that our residents and staff in this Walnut Village community will feel your presence and our resident council officers as they conduct the meeting today will feel your blessings. May our endeavors be pleasing in your sight, in your holy name, amen. Is there a motion to accept the minutes from the April meeting? Is there a second? Thank you, Matt. Is there any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. <coughs> Debbie, would you like to give us your report? Yes, I already got in a little bit of trouble because <coughs> It's two pages, so I'm gonna to try to boil it down to just the most important parts. So I don't bore you for too long. <coughs> okay, you probably all received a letter from the Anaheim Planning Commission. That is because uh, for Summer House 2, we have requested a variance for the fence. The new zoning is that, Jake, are you okay? The new zoning is that it can only be three feet tall which makes no sense from a safety perspective, and also because we already have a six foot wrought iron fence um, on about 200 yards on Ball Road. So we're, we're asking that we can extend that six foot high fence around Summer House instead of three feet. We already know that we've experienced some trespassers, some crime, and we don't think it's a good idea to A, make it easier for people to get in, and B, make it easier for people with memory impairment to get out should they happen to get out of the door. So that's what we're doing. Um, we are anticipating that after 5 p.m. on Thursday, this Thursday, we will have the Planning Commission's recommendation. We strongly believe they're going to say yes um, and so us going to the Planning Commission is going to be fairly quick and easy and just really kind of a reiteration of why we came up with our request for the variance, but we expect it to go through. So we're not anticipating that any of you will need to come unless you'd like to. I hope you're not planning to <coughs> vocalize against us. <laughs> that would be bad. Um, so we weren't planning any transportation as a, as a result of that. I don't know, I'm going to say this, um, and I don't see him here, but Don Baldwin um, on uh, April 25th received the well-earned Anaheim Police Department Volunteer of the Year, which is awesome. Our president also volunteers at the jail, the Anaheim Jail. And so for our special happy hour this Thursday, we are doing the thirst responder special happy hour. And because we wanna back the blue, we're providing a blue Hawaiian. So we hope you'll all join us for that. A reminder that the sense of place program that Front Porch is doing is uh, kicking off 
on Monday, May 22nd in the Red Chair Lounge at 1 p.m. The kickoff meeting is just really kind of to let everyone know what it's all about. And so we were just going to do the 1 p.m., but we know that we've got some folks who are out at doctor's appointments, so she'll stay till four and answer any questions if you happen to miss the one o'clock portion of the kickoff. A reminder that if you're a newer resident or if you'd like to take another picture, the photos for the resident directory are occurring this Friday and Saturday, and you can make your appointment with your floor coordinator. We are also having the resident and staff appreciation lunch on Cinco de Mayo this Friday. We're doing it this Friday because it's the start of Nurses Week and we wanted to make sure that we're including our nurses and all the care staff um, as part of the Nurses Week celebration by doing the appreciation lunch. So and of course, everyone's invited. Let's see how fast we're going. Uh, Direct TV. We've been working with Direct TV. You've all received the channel guide in your cubby. Please highlight the 48 channels above channel 13 that you would like to keep in case we have to reconfigure. We're trying not to. We have a meeting with them tomorrow. Mosquitoes. Orange County Register reported that it's going to be a bad summer. Obviously, we had a lot of rain. It grows mosquitoes very well. They're called Aedes aegypti, AKA nasty little ankle biters. They're super little, and, but they leave these big massive welts. So we're trying to get ahead of it. We're going to be spraying not only our team, but the pest control. We're inviting Orange County Vector Control to come in. What's really important is if you report to me or Ethan or the front desk, if you get bit, I hope you don't, but where you got bit if you know, so that we can really treat that area well. Fire alarm testing. It's the quarterly time to do our fire alarm testing. I'm gonna be putting a note at everyone's door as a reminder. It starts tomorrow, I'm sorry, from eight to four. There's only one day that it's gonna be audible and it won't impact the carnival. Um, we, I promise, that was a conversation that Ethan and I had. Circle of Friends Gala Luncheon, the one that we had to postpone in December, is going to happen on May 31st. It is limited, the seating is limited, we're gonna to have to do it in here. So um, if you're interested in coming, please RSVP. The invitation should be going out in the next week or so. Judy, do you want me to talk about Million Thanks or are you gonna talk about that? Okay. In that case, I'm done. See, it wasn't too bad. Questions? Oh, questions. questions. Yes. Um, you said you're meeting with Direct TV tomorrow. We're, we're actually meeting with, it's, well, it's a well, Zoom. Just a question. Is it possible that Direct TV could provide the Big Ten network? It, I, and if, it, if they don't provide the Big Ten network, There are a couple of different um, uh, packages. Um, that's why I kind of want everyone to really denote what their favorite channels are. And from that, we'll, we'll be able to pick the channel that most people want to see the channels on. I can ask that question. Good, thank you. I can ask that question. It's just, it's really a matter of upgrading the equipment. Um, but upgrading the equipment for some reason reduces the number of channels. It's, it's been a nightmare. There's a channel duplication right now. Channel 9 and channel 13 are the same. PBS? PBS. PBS. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So we have to, they have to test each alarm and they don't, it, it's more of an internal test where they just ensure that every alarm on the system is actually reporting back to the panel and reporting correctly. Um, they can usually do this without doing an audible, but by law we also have to do audibles because we have to test that those alarms are made, creating the appropriate level of sound and each of them that are supposed to are sounding. Sure. So does that mean we should ignore the noises when they happen? For, uh, yes, for um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's only gonna be audible one day. I'm trying to find out from Ethan which day. Uh -huh. um, and we will, I can try to make an announcement with a new PA system. I hear that you can't always hear it in your environment when, you're, when your living room's far away from the door. So once I know what day the audibles are, we'll run around and put a note by your door so that you can maybe plan to be gone that day. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Thank you, Debbie. Linda, your report. All right, Thursday, the carnival is from 10 to 12. Um, the weather, you know, the only thing I have ever heard to do about weather is a rain dance, and we sure don't want that. So everyone say no rain. Uh, we're going to make two plans. The carnival will be held regardless. If the weather doesn't cooperate, we will put the refreshments in the um, red chair lounge, the games in here, and the LLC with the chairman and, and their tables will remain the same. We will decide either Wednesday or early, very early Thursday morning. Uh, it seems a change is happening and we're gonna take advantage of it if we can. So if you don't receive anything, it's outside just as planned. Otherwise you will get a flyer either Wednesday evening or very early Thursday morning outside your door so you'll know where to go. We're looking forward to everyone coming and let's just have some fun and enjoy it. Thank you, Linda. Doug, give your report. Okay, the treasurer's report for the month of April. Uh, our totals uh, for each of these committees, the resident council operating fund now only has $10 in it. We have spent some uh, money on some office supplies that we needed and it is almost gone. Um, the music committee uh, has a total in their account of $18,160. The Employee Appreciation Fund, $87,774. Musical Theater and Birthday Show, $31,347. Our Hobby Shop remains the same at $191. Uh, Clay's Art Studio has $286. And the Scholarship Fund of $49,536. Are there any questions on the financials? Okay, thank you. Okay, before we start with our committee reports, I want to report that Mary Clarich has stepped up and decided to chair the food committee. And I would like to thank Mary Nadel for all of the time, effort, and energy she put into chairing the food committee. I'm giving the report. You're giving the report, but yes. She wasn't there. Okay, you're on. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I just want to report on the chef's table dinner. It was fantastic. We had four courses, and it was all paired by proper wines. It was lovely. So if you're interested, be sure and look for the announcement when the next one is. Uh, we had a discussion of the portion sizes of food. Some people were complaining that they would order half and they would get a whole, or they'd order a whole and they get a half. So they're looking into, they do have proportion sized 
utensils in the kitchen. So I think they're going to maybe try and use those. But I hope everybody's happy with the proportion they asked for. Uh, the mosaic at the grill has a new item on the menu, which is breakfast for dinner. It's two scrambled eggs, bacon, hash browns, uh, toast. I think that's it. I think that's all, yeah, <coughs> for uh, two points. The ice cream of the month is white chocolate raspberry swirl suggested by Elaine Quick. <laughs> Starting this month, Mary Claridge will be the new food chairman. So honor her and if you're interested in being on her committee, let her know because she's looking for people. Uh, if you have complaints or comments, we have these slips in the bistro and the grove. They're not always out where you can see them. So if you do have a complaint or com comment, please fill this out and then we will hear it as a committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Earthquake and music. Yes, yes. So everybody wants to know how the earthquake drill went, and um, I will give you a quick rundown. Before I do that, let me tell you that we did have an orientation class on April 12th, so um, most of our new residents have now been to that class. There's a few who didn't make it, and we will have another one in July. Um, so the drill, we want to thank everybody who went out and did their, uh, went to the pool and, and uh, the gym and went to play cards, and then when the bell rang, they came out to the courtyard because that really, really helped the drill. Um, the fire bell was shorter this year, you may have noticed. He finally got control of that. It's very, very tricky, and, and so uh, Ethan finally got it just down to three rings. Um, we weren't able to use the new public address system that we'd hoped for because they're still waiting for a part. Um, and thank you all for hanging your green tag if you were home and not hanging it if you were not home. That looked like it worked very well. Um, we gave 10 people a disaster story to report and uh, most of those um, got reported. Um, some were told to hang red tags and tell their story, and some had no tags, and they had to wait till somebody came by and got a nurse to come in and find out what their story was. Um, Debbie had previously um, been told to go to a seminar, so she wasn't there, and so um, Joel took over for her, and um, Doug, took over for me um, because he had not been the resident incident commander before. And Catherine took over for Terry Taylor on second floor. So we had some cross training going on, which is really, really good. Um, Jan Beersley also took over for Liz uh, Spradley who needed to be in the hospital with Gary. So um, the other, the, another good thing that happened was the block captains are now routinely telling us who to send, and that is should we send housekeeping or maintenance or nursing when there's a problem that needs to be reported. So we want to thank you all for your participation. Our biggest takeaway was that the staff responded more quickly than the resident team and the block captains, floor coordinators, and scribes were left with very little to write and report. Um, back in January, we told you of some transition changes. Um, Sandy will be in charge of the orientation PowerPoint um, class, and the documents were shifted away from Liz and Gary. At our next bi-monthly meeting in, on May 9th, we're gonna discuss some additional changes to take care of the problem that we've got two teams doing the same thing. 
we're going to try and figure out a way to make that work better. So we'll keep you informed. Are there any questions about the earthquake uh, planning? Okay, seeing no hands, I'll go on to music. So both our music groups um, are rehearsing for their upcoming programs. Chimers will play in June, and the chorale will sing in July. Um, the chimers are always looking for someone who could be a backup chimer because we, when we're missing a part, um, it's very linear. And when there's one person not there, you have a hole in your, in your musical line, and oftentimes it's the melody. And so if we could have one person who could be a backup, who could be called if someone else is going to be missing, it would be very helpful. So, Dee, are you in the room? If so, late, raise I your hand. Her, no, she had a doctor. So she had a doctor. Doc. Okay. Well, contact Dee Morrison if you think you might like to be uh, a backup chimer, and see her um, at the carnival. She'll have a chime with her, and you can practice playing it and see if you like it. Um, our donation months for the music committee were March and April. We want to thank everyone who helped us continue our resident-led music participation program. You heard Doug say we have $18,000 now. Our budget is $20,000, so we're just almost up there. And we very much appreciate your generous contributions. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Ellen, hospitality. Uh, during the month of April, we only had one new resident move in. Her name is Mary Moeller, and she moved into apartment 267. Mary is currently on a trip to the Germany to visit a daughter, and she'll return around the middle of May. I have already put her telephone number and email address in the resident handbook or directory in the post. So after she gets home, which is the, around the middle of May, I don't remember the exact date, Give her a few days to get over jet lag, and then invite her to dinner. Uh, our committee sent out five get well cards and two sympathy cards, and one prayer shawl was completed. We are looking forward to seeing you at our game, which will be horseshoes on Thursday at the carnival. Thank you, Ellen. Michelle, library. <coughs> Thanks for the great donations. Over the past month, we've received large donations from multiple donors. Betty, Betsy, Col yeah, Betsy Kohler's daughter-in-law, Susan Hopper, gave us 75 new and very recent bestsellers on behalf of her mother-in-law, Linda Hopper. Don Baldwin and Colleen Heron, as, as well as Ed and Sonia Leonard, Leonard, have offered us wonderful selections of bestsellers. An anonymous donor gave us a number of large print novels. Kim Norton, a uh, registered di uh, dietitian and director of dining services here, has donated a copy of the book, Mind Diet, a scientific approach to enhancing brain function and helping prevent Alzheimer's and dementia by Maggie Moon. Uh, we appreciate your help. Uh, <clears throat> the results of the Walnut Village Library's uh, computer survey with 42 residents responding show the following results. Most residents have computer skills. 32 use a computer every day. Most have participated in social networking, Zoom meetings, and have taken computer classes in the past. Only three residents said they had no experience or interest in using computers. The following numbers have been revised. There are 22 residents with PCs, 16 residents with Macs, four iPads, two Kindles, and two iPhones that were actually listed. I think it's probable that others haven't listed their smartphones or tablets. Uh, <clears throat> there's a chart in the May Library newsletter which comes out today showing how many residents checkmarked each potential com computer class subject. Top prefer preferences including Microsoft Word, general web searching skills, Microsoft Excel, Google Docs, and Google. Uh, Microsoft Word and web searching beyond the basics will probably be the next new computer topics offered. <clears throat> oh.
All our library volunteers help maintain the library. As the wizard managing the design and flow of the collection, Terry Taylor oversees donations and item processing, as well as filing, shelf spacing, and weeding. Also, Terry is and has lists, uh, has created lists on many topics, including media, true crime, music, poetry, and multi-author books to help those looking for specific titles. With the new flexible schedule, Carol Car Marsh can accommodate residents interested in having her read selections that they themselves choose. Kathy Stanek maintains the bulletin boards and contributes book reviews. Marilyn Brayman helps everyone, including the staff. Okay, the back and web computer classes. Main classes include Joyce, Joyce Kessler's 1 p.m. Tuesday, May 2nd, overview of the Apple and Mac, Mac operating systems in the LLC. Apple users are invited to bring their own portable computers and tablets. Michelle, I, I myself will teach three two-part sessions on web surfing and email on uh, the following dates at 1 p.m. in the LLC. On Wednesday, May 17th and Friday, May 19th, Wednesday, May 24th and Friday, May 26th, Wednesday, May 31st and Friday, June 2nd. Please sign up in the post office activities notebook. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Liz, musical theater. We would like to thank you all for coming to the April birthday show. It was Ladies First. That's the show choir from Troy High School. And I think everybody really, really enjoyed them. So we'll try to invite them back again next year. A musical theater committee survey was placed in your post box last week. I want to thank you to those of you that completed it. We've gotten probably about 40 back. So I'm hoping that some of you will still give us your feedback, because we would appreciate knowing your thoughts about what we should and what you like and what you don't like. Also, uh, you would have received on your table uh, the Musical Theater Committee donation flyer. May and June are our months to solicit funds for the birthday show, and we are, <clears throat> and your support helps us to keep the shows going, and we thank you very much. We'll see you all on Thursday at the carnival, and the last item is five of us from Walnut Village went to a showcase. A showcase is an event where performers get 10 minutes to show us what their act is. So we saw about 30 acts from 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. So it's quite a long day, but interesting day. And we found some really good performers and we're gonna to try to get them to come next year and provide some new entertainment for you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Liz. Merlin, Safety and Grounds. If you look around our gardens here, you'll see that it's very beautiful this year. They've done major trimming of the trees and the grass and planted plants. They had some help with the rain, too. Unfortunately, the rain is what's bringing the mosquitoes, so there's a little price to pay there, I guess. The courtyard fountain is back up and it's running after a replacement of the burnt out pump. The flowers around the fountain are called Fairy fan flowers, they have fairy uh, fan flowers. They came from Australia, and uh, not individually, but that's where they were grown originally, I guess. Uh, we've been asked that question several times. The roof repair planned around the village area has been completed. You saw all of that that was uh, marked off, so, uh, Crash wouldn't fall down. That has all been completed. There may be additional uh, repairs needed on some other buildings uh, we found. <clears throat> the major duct cleaning has been completed. The public uh, address system has been installed. Maybe a part or two is still needed. The annual fire alarm testing will be next week. Don't panic goes off, at least you'll know that it's coming. Uh, prepare yourself for the semi-annual semi window washing. 
that will be happening uh, the week of May 9th and the week of May 16th. If there's somebody on your porch and they got a squeegee and a brush, why well, it's all right. Anybody else? Question them. Uh, there's uh, been a number of relocations of uh, several occupants uh, and it's put quite a load in our own people and some of the things haven't gotten, gotten done as fast as we'd hoped for. Uh, many items have been uh, reported to the desk and they have been completed by the maintenance team and we ask that you please continue reporting these items to needing repair and we'll take care of them as fast as possible. A report. This report will be put in the post office if you want to read it in detail. Thank you. Yes. You all mentioned that sometime in May you're going to make re replace major units that affect our heating and air conditioning. Is that date set yet? I don't have a date on that, but there we have a lot where we replace some, and more will be um, replaced. That we I, I can't. Heat or air it's all the same unit. Yeah. Same unit, yes. Okay. Yeah, you know, you were the one that said that, that, that people were having a problem finding the, the uh, handicapped no, parking. No, I said they were having a problem. It was confusing to me. Oh, it was confusing to you. Well, I, we, we're going to look into putting another sign up there with an arrow looking at okay. pointing to parking uh, as well. So that will be taken care of. Thank you. Yes? Thank you. Have a date. Maybe I can get some help from the, the one that knows. So it's called the Orchard, and right now we're still waiting for the flooring samples to come in. We've got to try to match it to the existing wood floor, which is very blonde, um, and also make it look good against the. Well, the the wood and the doors and the trim, which is very red. So we're still working with that. We were hoping we had a remnant of the custom carpet in the dining room that we could put in there, but unfortunately we're, we're not able to locate that. So we do have to look at a different flooring option. So right now still waiting for flooring samples. It's taking a long time, but that's, that's what's holding it up. Virginia Scholarship. The scholarship committee did not have any new applications this month. This is not the time of year when people are starting school. Uh, there are five of our recipients currently completing their semester, uh, ones that we announced before. And uh, we're looking forward to the carnival this Thursday. Hope you will stop by our area, uh, do ring toss, and also look into information about the committee. Uh, the committee will meet fo immediately following this meeting, briefly. Thank you, Virginia. Judy, Life in Richmond. slow down the next month, but I'm lying. So this month of May is going to be a very busy month. I am only going to mention those things that have not already been mentioned and that are different than what we normally do. Um, we did talk about the resident staff lunch, which will be on Cinco de Mayo, uh, and Aaron Copenhagen will come and play during lunch for both the staff and the residents. And if it does drizzle a little bit, that's easy. We can put the whole thing inside. So we don't have to really do too much about that. Uh, Debbie started to talk about A Million Thanks. That is our outreach program where we read, sort uh, letters that are written uh, by people all over the United States. Um, I put out a flyer, and we must have had 10 people the other day come. It was wonderful, and I think they're interested in coming back. We still have a lot of letters that need to be read. So I have it on the calendar for the 6th, the 13th, and the 27th. It's one of those things that, 
If you really don't have anything to do in the evening, that you can pick up some letters and take them into your apartment. You don't have to be there on the day that we are actually uh, assigned to be reading them. And thanks to Mac and everybody else. Gina, yes. Tell them who the letters are okay. Oh, I'm sorry. A million thanks. All right. We talked about it. You, you're right. They're to the uh, deployed military all over the United States and the world. Uh, this organization was started many years ago. It was started by a granddaughter of one of our residents, and she was in her freshman year. Now she's married and has two little girls. So it's been a long time, and I think from the last, oh, the last amount of letters, we have read 13 million letters over the last eight years. Um, and and it, it really is very, very interesting. Uh, we get some very interesting letters, some very well-written letters. We get some scribble. Uh, we get a lot of you know different things, but it is very rewarding to those uh, who do read the letters and sort it. So if you'd like to be involved, doesn't take any experience, we'll show you how to do it. Just come up on one of those days uh, at 10 o'clock. Let's see, we have donuts on the 12th, which is a huge success. Uh, come early because we go through over four dozen donuts within probably 45 minutes. Um, I have invited our fire chief, Pat Russell, to come and have donuts and coffee with us uh, from eight to nine on the 12th. So come and talk to him and find out what's going on with the fire department here in uh, Anaheim. Uh, Mother's Day, which we haven't said too much about, is the 14th. Uh, make sure you make your reservations for the event. Uh, it will be from 11.30 to 2, and it will be a buffet. Let's see. Some things have changed around. If you, um, Like Pachanga is a week early, uh, so make sure you kind of check the calendar. On the 12th, we do have a celebration of life for Anne McCowan. Um, and it will be, we're going to leave here at 12, at 10.30, uh, the Celebration of Life is at 11. I will put the sign-up sheet uh, at the welcome desk. I haven't done a cover sheet yet. I'm waiting to get a picture before I can do, do a cover sheet. Um, but I will put it out uh, at the desk, and we will do transportation. The Greek Festival. Fun, lots of fun. Uh, at the Greek church on Dale, we don't stay very long. The food is wonderful. Their feta fries uh, are exceptional. There's good music. Um, it's just a, a fun hour, hour and a half. So join us on the 20th. On the 21st, busy weekend, uh, La Mirada Symphony. Uh, there, I think I have 15 tickets. Sign up. Uh, we will leave at 2.15. Uh, the concert's at 3, and we should be back promptly around 5.15. So that gives you a, an idea as to the length of the performance. On the 22nd, Monday the 22nd, I have a scan lecture. Uh, the gentleman that's going to come in is actually the son-in-law of Clyde Garrison. He lives in Huntington Beach, and he's a volunteer for the Huntington Beach Police Department. And what he does is go out to senior communities and he talks about different scams that seniors are affected by. Uh, he's a lot of good handouts. Uh, and that will be at 1030. There is a signed up sheet that will be in the uh, LLC. Uh, Circle of Friends. We talked a little bit about that. That's the gala uh, on the 31st. But there is a silent auction that goes along with that. And everything for the silent auction will be up in the little uh, cabinets in the uh, welcome desk area. And they will be there by the 23rd, which is a Tuesday. So please check them out and then be prepared to come to the Circle of Friends. It will be a silent auction. Um, birthday show, as you know, is on the 25th. Uh, Memorial Day is on the 29th. We will have bingo early on that day. I will come in. We will have bingo early on that day. There is Taps Around the World uh, starting at 
245. Steve Krauss will be here to blow taps so that we can be we can participate in taps around the world. And then uh, the South Coast Brass will be here to entertain us. Um, and that's on Memorial Day. Um, what's going on? Participate. We love having you, and that gives me a job. So please continue to do it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Judy. Is there any old business? Any new business? Seeing none, the meeting is adjourned. Bingo's at two.